Welcome to a summary of my Wings of Liberty with only workers and buildings run. But before we start, let's look at the rules. The run has to be done on Brutal. No build missions and segments are free wins. I will skip them in this video. Only workers are trainable. And only them, static defense and allied units are allowed to do damage in build segments. Other units are allowed to do friendly fire though. The drill and artifact count as static defense. At first came Outlaws, objective destroy a dominion base with only SCVs to deal damage. My start for this mission was to send a barracks to a scouting pillar, while I focused on building as many command centers as I could manage. The first attack wave died easily, but the second wave with their medic support would outlast my SCVs. I split them with some position trickery of the barracks, making the fight easier. The third wave was way too much, so I went with the tried and tested bronze leak strategy of lifting my buildings and flying away. This was just the start. I proceeded to lure the growing attack waves away from the base to mine minerals, as my goal was to wait until the 35 minute mark to max out the AI supply. They would start to add base defenders to the attack deluge by then. With only a marine and a tank left at the base, my attack started by dropping SCVs on top of them, as well as their command center and SCVs. The rest got cleaned up quickly and the bunker of death, guarded by Hellions waiting to patrol, was the last building left. I just needed to trigger their pathing and drop on top of the bunker, resulting in a win through burning damage. Next up was Zero Hour. Objective survive for roughly 20 in-game minutes, still with only SCVs, but with missile turrets for anti-air. This mission was also tough, requiring lots of luck and repair micro. It started again by lifting off with the barracks and sending them to a specific spot, as well as walling the high ground with engineering base. The early hydrolisks proved to be pretty dangerous. One wave with three of them would always target my SCVs, so I had to delay them. Luckily, a later attack wave at the 8 minute mark could block them, I even managed to find a position that would reliably kill one of the Hydrolisks too. Everything after that was tricky. The AI could decide to end it at any given time. I had to hope and build barracks for later as my base would eventually be overwhelmed, though it had to finish the Mutalisk grave at the 13 minute mark. Once the wall got breached, I lifted my CC and spread my flying buildings around and prayed that there was enough flying HP to survive. This mission led me through after the fourth complete restart. Smash and grab was impossible at that point, which left me with the evacuation. Objective: 50 civilians must reach their colony ships. Welcome to the second hardest mission of the run. On top of that, I decided against collecting additional minerals in the no build segment. The first goal was to collect every available mineral container and move the wrecks to the top path. Getting the first wave through was infuriating. It would be too fast, but holding position in front of the APC constantly would delay it, which wasn't easy. The hitbox is pretty big, causing me to accidentally move my SCVs into instead in front of the APC many times, but I managed to get 5 additional minutes out of it. The second and third wave were similar so I'll show how I dealt with the latter one, mostly by blocking the attack paths with barracks and hold position flying ones to disrupt attack waves with hydralisks. Barracks were better than engineering base in this situation because it allowed me to lift off and let the Zerg retreat once the civilians entered their ships. Dealing with the fourth wave was difficult. The Zerg dropped right on top of the road and my SCVs had to fight them and suffered many casualties. I almost had nothing left at the end of the wave. I grabbed the last minerals with a CC and proceeded to throw everything liftable on top of the paths for the last wave. This would be a close one. The APC moved, my defenses got worn down, money ran out and I only could hope that it was enough. The APC died near the end and the last civilian escaped just in time. Luckily the campaign starts with free Zerg research so now I had enough to get right to it, but the lab would only be unlocked after the next mission. My two options were easy though, outbreak is beatable but tedious, 
and I wanted to try Devil's Playground. Objective, gather 8000 minerals. I knew from the start that SCVs wouldn't be able to defend the base, but guessed that playing this mission like Outlaws could be a solution. So I built up and rescued Tosh's mining crew. My chosen safe spots needed anti-air, so I built an engineering bay at the top of the map and added turrets to the spots. Then the first circlings attacked, and I had to lift and spread my CCs to the safe spots. One of them still needed missile turrets and more barracks for later shenanigans. The routine every time the lava surge subsided was to land and mine with my SCVs, retreat points when the Zerg attacked, and land again when the area was clear. Repeating this many times paired with building turrets on the mid pillar in the process. Luring the Brutalisk with precise movement from the barracks would result in a fatal bath in the lava, and I finished the mission soon after that. Strike turrets were now available, finally giving me some offensive capability, so I tried them immediately in Outbreak. Objective, destroy all Zerg buildings. Even though I had access to Shrike turrets, it still wasn't likely enough to defend the base during the night time. So again with the lift off and evade strategy. This mission was really easy but tedious. The day would be filled with mining and building bunkers to destroy the infestations. Then retreat and wait once night time arrived. The only difficulty was the performance of my PC. This didn't sound good, but other than that it went great. The creeped up areas were dealt with by dropping SCVs on the tumors and letting the defense die over time. The rest fell due to bunker spam and I unlocked the planetary fortress and missile turret upgrades. With those, Welcome to the Jungle was next. Objective, gather 7 terracing canisters. My strategy for this mission was simple. First defend against the early attack waves, then build CCs, fill them with SCVs, lift them, fly to choke points, turn them into fortresses and add turrets for anti-air. It was fairly easy to gather the terracine and the research with this defense setup and the mission was over in just a few reloads. Smash and grab was easy with my buildings. Objective, destroy three salad statues. This mission was over quickly. Set up defenses, grab research, fly through the middle to the end, grab the last research, build defenses next to the stone salads and destroy them easily. After that I unlocked vanadium plating and went to Haven. The choice screen gave me anxiety for some reason, but I needed a Zerg research, so safe haven it was. Objective, destroy free Nexi and the mothership. My plan for this mission was to do strategic strikes. The bottom nexus would be targeted by two CCs. That base has a perfect landing zone for one of them and the second placed next to it was in range of the nexus. Placing a turret and a fortress on this hill was enough to deal with the top nexus. Destroying the third nexus was problematic, with the hill next to it too well defended. So I had to slow push into the base with a bunker line and a fortress as support. This would eventually reach the nexus and destroy it. Only the mothership remained and it was greeted by a lot of turrets. Multi-build and double repair were now available and I got to use them in the dig. Objective, open a temple. This defense mission required me to rush a fortress on the right side and bunkers on the left to deal with the first attack wave and then make a wall of fortresses on both sides, aided by obliterating the right base's production with the drill. I also used it against the airwaves and other important targets such as Immortals and High Templars. This mission went by easily with the fortress walls and the sniping. Again with only a few reloads, once that was done I gained access to the Saratul missions. The Great Train Robbery was sadly impossible to win with my setup so Whispers of Doom was the only way to progress. It's a no-build mission though, resulting in a free win. I also completed Breakout, but this wasn't required. So the next mission was Sinister Turn. Objective, destroy three preserver prisons. My plan for this mission was really simple. Building a lot of cannons at the base and mass probes. 
as well as grabbing the bonus objectives to get closer to the SCV reactor upgrade. The probe swarm was unleashed once I had enough of them, running through Mars base while their defense tore them apart. But a single 4 HP probe survived, and it was enough. I cannon rushed the prisons once Ma moved out again, resulting in a quick win. Echoes of the future was really easy. Zeratul rescued the base, then proceeded to jump on the first tendril, jumped two times to reach the second one, wrapped around the left side to jump on the third tendril, and reached the last with a few reloads. And with that, I would consider the challenge failed, because I used Zeratul's abilities in a build segment. Due to that, I had to do it again, with just walking Zeratul, increasing the difficulty to the third worst mission of the run, starting with grabbing all available pickups and temporarily walling the upper choke point, as well as camping the spawn locations of the Nidus Worms with cannons. I needed to expand and take the high ground expansion by killing the spine crawler with probes and cannons for the rest. Furthermore, the right expansion would also be cleared by probe sniping tumors and cannons, while I simultaneously pushed on the left side, and after some time, the left expansion was also cleared. My money started to run out slowly, so I started to walk with Zeratul to the first tendrils, the nearest as the second one to have a full heal. The third tendril was guarded heavily, though I only had to take out the Brute Lord to get Zeratul through. Getting to the last tendril was painful. I had no money left and I needed to push up a defended ramp. So I tried distracting with probes and walking Zeratul. He died a lot. The solution for this was to pull the Zerg into my cannons to thin them out, sacrificing most of my remaining probes, but I managed to walk Zeratul on top of the beacon on my second try. In Utter Darkness was impossible. So I got my upgrades and proceeded with the Mobius Factor. Objective, destroy three data cores. This was a fun puzzle mission. I started with building more CCs as my 1500 HP medivacs, and then rescued the mercs near the first core, killed them off and built bunkers and a turret to destroy the core. The Brutalisk was dealt with by bunkers, while I prepared a landing zone for the fortresses on the left side of the island. Destroying the second data core was easy. I had dropped SCVs behind it earlier and they could take it down with precise positioning and without drawing aggro from the defenders. I had to wait as long as possible with attacking the core though. Two Nidus worms would appear at low health that spawned three roaming enemies constantly and they would head right to my fortresses near the third core. The final core was really hard. A brood lord needed to be dealt with and I had to clear the back area which got bunkered up. And with all set in place, I started to attack the core with SCVs. Altolisks would show up, but get drawn to the bunkers in the back. Dropout units and broodlings would clash against my fortresses. My base and defenses fell as my money ran out, and my last building died right after the core was destroyed. Supernova was next on the line. Objective, destroy a vault. I defended the base with a bunker line at first, building an additional CC as well, and bailed once the minerals ran out. My strategy was building an engineering bay at the top and fly my buildings over part of the top base, aiming for the CCs to survive, then build turrets on the other side against air and colossi. A turret on this spot could reach both warp prisms on the high ground, disabling both cannons there. The other cannon was destroyed by a bunker, and another one destroyed the pylon powering the last two cannons. And now for the finale. A bunker shooting the vault, and only the vault wouldn't draw in the ground defenders, so I had to abandon the bunker when an attack wave was active. But without targets, they would just run into the fire wave. Unfortunately, the bunker wasn't enough, so I had to lure the last defenders into the fire and drop my SCVs to attack. It was just a matter of reloading and getting the timing right, so one of my damage sources destroyed the vault on the second try. Now it was time for the last mission before Char, Ma of the Void. 
objective, destroy a vault again. This mission was tricky. I had to turn the left part of the island into a turret and bunker forest. And also had to plug every free square with sensor towers to prevent drops. One fortress needed to be sacrificed to get access to the expansion, which I stripped mine quickly with my six command centers. And after that, five of them migrated along the bottom to a ripfield generator, leaving a factory behind at a defended area. Attacking the generator would send a carrier to defend, but I destroyed it with a turret and repeatedly drop attacked the generator until it was down. The generator in the bottom left could only be destroyed once the guarding carrier was sent in an attack wave. Luckily, five SAVs could finish a bunker just in time before needing rescue. With both generators in the bottom gun, a small and safe sliver opened up, where I proceeded to build turrets to deal with the mothership. Eventually, it would be destroyed. And so, the final attack was ready to be executed. I rushed CCs on top of the vault and turned them into fortresses. It was tricky and close, but the vault was destroyed, finishing the mission. Only three missions remained, starting with Gates of Hell. Objective, get 100 supply and kill three Nidus worms. This mission has a rough start. I needed to build a fortress as soon as possible as well as a bunker line, gradually increasing the defenses later on, together with a CC to mine at the expansion. There was one scary attack wave that I had to do preparations for, with a bunker and turret line. The brute lords of the wave tore through my setup while I built turrets under them, and the rest of the wave was repelled at the base. It got easier after that though, allowing me to get another CC and mine out. My plan was to fly around the map's border, but there was an anti-air island, so I sacrificed the barracks to get through and then built SCVs at a future crash site to get the first objective done. A bunker wall was needed to clear a few defenders and then set up fortresses to greet the Nidases, one of them in a strangely fitting spot. And the second objective was fairly easy, as a mass of SCVs descended upon three Nidus worms, tearing them apart in moments. Next up was a controversial decision. I went with Belly of the Beast as the choice mission. After some tries, Elm Shattered the Sky did not succeed. My strategy simply didn't work and I couldn't find anything useful, so I deemed it impossible. And with regrets, I started all in air version. Objective, hold the artifact for 30ish minutes. All in air is a tough mission with lots of brute lords, which SCVs couldn't deal with easily, as well as Kerrigan and the Leviathan, two of the strongest hero units in the game. Both were big problems, capable of dealing lots of damage to my defenses. I also had to reduce my graphic settings to record somewhat lag free. And again with another controversial decision. I used buildings and my starting army to delay the first attack waves until my defenses were ready. I hadn't used army units as meat shields in any other mission, though I didn't forbid it, but in hindsight buildings would have been better. Three planetary fortresses on each side and missile turrets, as well as Psy disruptors as support, were enough to shred everything on the ground. Only the airwaves of this mission required a lot of missile turrets near the artifact and the mineral line as protection. Kerrigan showed up at the 9 minute mark and I lured her into a trap, but I needed to get rid of her hunter killers. A Psy disruptor and a fortress were enough and I stopped repairing the fortress after the hunter killers were gone. And trapped Kerrigan once she destroyed the fortress. Her ranged attack has a minimum range, so she can use her melee attack. But even flying buildings are valid for this, causing her to just stare at my CC. I just parked her in a safe spot and she wouldn't be an issue for the rest of the mission. The situation at the base became a bit dicey however. Brute Lords were attacking now, but I found a way to lure them into my turret range with SCVs. The defense held for the time being, with added defenses for the artifact and base. I also used the no wall when I thought it would be necessary. Then the Leviathan arrived. This spawner monster was enough to overwhelm my defenses at the artifact, but it got the Kerrigan treatment and stared at turrets after the Mutalisk escort was gone. With both run enders occupied staring at buildings, the only issue that remained were the Broodlords, 
they either had to be killed by building turrets under them or a nova blast. But in the end I managed to hold them off long enough while my defenses stood strong and both the enemy heroes dead at buildings the charge reached 100%. With that it was the end of the run. I had finished the campaign albeit with some decisions that were unfortunate. So I decided to change things after I started to edit this video. Out of both issues, beating Shatter the Sky seemed to be the more difficult one. I was sure that squeezing in extra distraction buildings instead of fusing the army for all in would be easy. <coughs> so I looked for something to beat the mission. And the strategy I disregarded before turned out to be promising. Shatter the Sky. Objective, destroy four coolant towers, which can only be attacked by SCVs due to permanent creep. Two of them are guarded by corruptors, which disable buildings, and three are heavily guarded by surrounding defenders, making the dropping SCV threat really costly. But there was hope, an island of hope. I started again with building extra CCs. The first of them was needed to cross a chasm to gain access to an expansion and the first coolant tower. The second was turned into a fortress as defense. The rest were just mule support. Getting to the coolant tower was easy from the other side. One turret and a bunker were enough to kill the two mutal and one hydralisks guarding the backside. And four SAVs could attack it safely. The next goal was to clear the two expansions by building bunkers in front then baiting the defenders out with a flying building. The north side had to clear a spine as well. And with this preparation out of the way, it was time to bail to Hope Island. This location couldn't be reached by ground forces and the Zerg do not have dropper lords. It was the perfect spot for missile turrets and a fortress on the high ground to counter broodlings. This setup allowed me to defend against the airwaves fairly well, albeit with some money losses, but I had no other option as my idea was to remove the coolant tower defenders by maxing out the supply of each zerg. The top and bottom left bases ran out of supply fairly quickly, after the 1 hour and 1.5 and hour respectively. Dropping SCVs on top of the tower was good enough for the top base and after some time I had it in one hit range. This was good enough for the time being. Destroying the bottom left tower wasn't easy. This base does not send corruptor attack waves so the defending ones were still there. But I found a way to drop behind the main base, walk my SCVs to the tower and attack it from there. In the end I had to resort to wasteful drops for both of the bottom towers, but they were close to destruction after a while. With this preparation done, I ambushed the towers one last time. First the bottom left, then the right one and at last the top, finishing the mission. In the end all it took was the lessons from outlaws for the strategy, and all in for dealing with broodlords and an island. Once again all in, but it's the ground version, with a lot of Nidusworm spawns and no way to move out and kill the far ones. My strategy was to first move command my army into the top left base, not using them as bait. Then rush fortresses on the left path and distract the first attack waves with flying buildings while I was setting up more defenses. I had to use the first nova immediately because my setup wasn't ready. The attack waves on the left side were out of nova range unfortunately, but the fortresses and upside disruptor held for now. The first and third nidus wave required a lot of good RNG. The first had to spawn in range of my defenses, since I couldn't afford to build a bunch of bunkers and the third wave arrived while I was busy dealing with Kerrigan. Chasing Kerrigan is a lot more luck dependent in this version. I struggled with Kerrigan's escort as well as trapping her a lot more than in the air version. And on top of that, all Zerg from Nidus Worms attack nearby buildings, so if a Nidus Worm spawned near this area it would be game over. But I managed to get her stuck after roughly 30 minutes of reloading and the rest of the mission was surprisingly easy. Every defense line was tough to break for the Zerg and the forward fortresses on the left could deal with any far Nidus that spawned there, causing the Nidus waves to clump up in more favorable positions. It wasn't a free window, I had to manage the repairing SCVs and more than once a defense line would be broken because I messed up. Especially repair micro mismanagement caught up to me near the end. 
as I ran out of minerals for a bit and the low ground of the top line was destroyed, causing the last person to be a bit stressful. Only two fortresses, a disruptor and two bunkers defended the artifact. A fortress has luckily a higher target priority than the artifact, and they held the hill while the Zerg chewed at my base. This truly marks the end of the campaign, but there is one more thing left to do. I've presented so far every mission that is possible, except for one. They've been either easy to beat or more like an intriguing puzzle, needing the correct strategy, or just a bit hard to execute. This last mission is just pure pain, suffering and by far the hardest one I've managed to beat. Haven's Fall took me about 50 hours to beat the first time. Repeating and recording it, another 10. Objective, destroy 4 to 9 infestations. My start was to immediately build forward defenses next to the first infestation and expand it against aberrations, while slowly covering the airways to the colonies with turrets. I then pulled the brood lords away from the infestation to build turrets under them. The Wyverphage itself was dealt with by 24 SCVs, stopping infested spawns. The next goal was to clear a landing zone in the south base. Completely destroying it would cost too much though at this stage, but finishing this mission would take a couple of hours and weakening the strong attack waves from this base by destroying the Greater Spire and the Altarist Cavern was really helpful. Clearing the top base had to be done as cheap as possible, so I had to slow push with bunkers, salvaging the ones that took a lot of damage and rebuild them. A fortress was needed for the initial bit though, as my strategy was to creep from the left to the bottom right of the base. There was one problem, this base has an altarisk defending the lower right side. My bunkers wouldn't be able to progress much once that gets rebuilt and thrown at them over and over again, due to an altarisk cavern in the back. My solution for that was to lure the defenders next to it away with fighting at the bottom. Then fly a CC next to the cavern drop an SCV snipe team and attack it over and over again until it died. And so I was finally able to push around and took out the hydralisk then and the pool in the process. The rest was fairly easy, only the infinite infested spawning huts were a bit of a problem. The base was cleared after only an hour of fighting and about 900 minerals spent. The next base to go was the right hand one, which was a nightmare and the reason this mission took ages. There are four infested buildings out of reach that constantly replenish infested losses in seconds. My only way to damage them was to drop SCVs, do tiny amounts of damage and withdraw immediately to repair. Not only did the strategy take long, but it was stressful as well and my drops needed to deal damage without losing too much, while also keeping an eye out to deal with attack waves effectively. But after a lot of time, most of me was messing up dropping and being forced to reload, the infested hut and the barrack in the back fell. Only the starport and the command center on the other side were problematic. I had to build and maintain a bunker line on that side to continuously draw in the infested to the front while I resumed my SCV drops. But again, after some time and lots of reloads, I prevailed. So I only had to take out the last but helpful huts at the front. One trapped an aberration and the other spawned infested, always close to aggro into my defense. The remaining base was no match against my SCVs and bunkers. Only after two in-game hours of fighting, the base was finished. The bottom base was easy. I set a fortress up again at the landing zone and destroyed the infested huts of the base. One can be dealt with by drops, while the fortress took aggro from banelings close to it. The other hut can easily be reached by a bunker. The rest of that base wasn't too problematic, but I had to resort to SCV drops again to get to the spawning pool due to banelings and all the other buildings fell shortly after that. And so this horrible mission was done. Mostly because the first couple of hours are a multitasking marathon, I had to defend every attack wave effectively and reload when I didn't react fast enough to mitigate any excessive losses. This concludes the video. I have to say that I didn't think that challenge run would be possible at first, but it just kept on going, though it's a bit unfortunate that I had to include the Zeratul missions. Thank you for watching this video.